political reporter Robert Costa, along with Hugh Hewitt, the host of the Hugh Hewitt Show on the Salem Radio Network, and Maria Teresa Kumar of Voto Latino. Maria Teresa, uh, Teresa Kumar, how about you? Do you think there was a softening there at all in terms of how he addressed or didn't address, for that matter, the 11 million who are already here? First of all, there's no softening. And also, he was basically speaking on both sides of his mouth as he was on both sides of the border. When he was in Mexico today, Stephen, he basically said that immigration, illegal immigration, undocumented immigration was a humanitarian issue. What we just heard from Do Donald Trump, there was nothing humanitarian about it. The fact that he is willing to round up 11 million people, first of all, would break the bank of Homeland Security, would nearly bankrupt whole economies in different states, as Georgia has tried to do and realize that they can't. And He's not providing the leadership that we actually need to have in this country and recognize that we need a form of, uh, to fix the immigration system because there are over 6 million Americans who live with mixed status families, meaning that they are living among people who may not be able to come out of the shadows because they are undocumented. I have to give it to Donald Trump. He's consistent when it comes to understanding how to play the media, how to play with words. But if you pay close attention with what he did to me with Mexico today, saying that, again, in undocumented illegal immigration was a humanitarian issue, and then he came over into Arizona and switched his words speaking in code, I found this nothing short of a hate speech. Let me ask you, how did you read, and I think we're going to talk about this as the hour goes along, trying to figure out exactly what his plan here is for the 11 million. Some people read the speech of Maria Theresa Kumar as Donald Trump leaving it open that he will go after criminals, he'll go after people with criminal records, people he deems a security risk, and the status of anybody remaining after that will sort of be left up in the air and kicked down the road. It, did you read it that way, or did you read it, it as wasn't, he's it saying he's going to deport everybody uh, all at once? He, no, no, he basically did a sliding scale. He espoused right now what President Obama's uh, situation is, which basically says, we're going to identify the criminals and deport them first. But then Donald Trump doubled down and said, we're going to get everybody and make sure that they leave the border. Homeland Security has, they, um, the Congressional Budget Office has actually done extensive research on this and actually has demonstrated that the idea of rounding up 11 million people would bankrupt Homeland Security. It's nearly impossible. And it's also not an actual policy that would be sustainable. He, Donald Trump also said that the world was watching today. You bet they were watching, and they were getting incredibly frightened. He, I mean, some of the stuff that he used, he basically doubled down on, it's, it's words that we've heard before, right? De a deportation task force, extreme vetting, ideological certification. What exactly that, does that mean? He's going after people that are slightly different of what a mainstream American should look like. Every single American should be completely alarmed with what they just heard. And, and Maria, the difference, I guess, between then and now, or between even last week and now when it comes to Donald Trump in this topic, is today he did get the opportunity to share the stage with the head of state, with the, with the president of Mexico, uh, offered some, uh, I guess, extra legitimacy by that. You always look in politics at that plausibility test they talk about when right. voters go into the voting booth. Can they see the candidate actually sitting there performing the job of president? Did the president of Mexico do Donald Trump a favor today in that regard? I mean, I, I, I'm still trying. I'm scratching my head over that one. I, I, he has the, some of the lowest favorability in Mexico, and he brings in someone that Mexicans like even less than he. That that made no sense to me, quite frankly. But speaking about trying to act like macho and being, you know, being a man that can go toe to toe with someone, Donald Trump was facing the president of Mexico and didn't have the guts to actually ask him to pay for the wall. Yet he goes on, crosses the border again into Arizona, and says, "I'm going to make him. I'm going to make them pay the wall." But I think my, I guess my, my biggest challenge in having these conversations is that we keep treating Donald Trump like a traditional candidate. He is not. He is not someone that we have ever seen in modern times. The way he knows how to rile up a base, the way he knows how to talk in code and blow, blow racial whistles so that all of a sudden everybody knows exactly what he's saying, but he doesn't have to say it out loud, is incredibly dangerous. And we have to stop treating him like a, an actual candidate. There's a reason why we have over 100 Republicans that are distancing themselves from Trump saying, he is not our ideology. He is not our brand. Because what he speaks to and what he stands for is so diametrically opposed to what America is. We are a nation of immigrants, Steve. The fact that we are not acknowledging that and basically trying to you know, parse out nuances is dangerous because he's actually telling us that he is going to create a second class of citizens, and we should be okay with that.